give it a minute, Lord. We've come to worship you. We've come to lift you up today, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor today, God. Lord, let our voices be heard in your throne room, Jesus. Lord, let your name be lifted high in this place and in this city. In the name of Jesus, we speak your name today, Jesus. We worship you today, God. We give you glory, Jesus.
you shout like the weight has been lifted why don't you dance like that weight has been lifted hallelujah hallelujah i've been set free hallelujah no more chains no more bondage oh all over the sanctuary why don't we give him a hand praise oh we magnify you Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Look at your neighbor and ask them, have you been set free? Hallelujah. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Amen. Has the weight been lifted? Look at your neighbor and say, I think you've lost a little weight. The weight has been lifted. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't you give the Lord another hand praise? <laughs> Welcome to Mission Sunday. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. And we are so happy that you are here. Very special day today. And I am going to do my best to, to get out of the way. And I have a list of announcements that were on my phone, and they are not there. So uh, we're going to, I'll try to remember to get those out of the way. But um, let's remember every Tuesday night, this Tuesday, 7 Recovery Ministry here at the church at 7 o'clock. 7 at 7. Amen. Those that have hurts, habits, and hangups, uh, we have the place for you. Amen. And so where you can receive support, love, prayer, fellowship. Amen. So remember that every Tuesday at 7 p.m. our Christ Cover Recovery, Christ Centered Recovery Program. And this Sunday, this Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night Bible study at 7 o'clock. Oh, here's my announcements. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Thank you, brother. All right, this coming Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, a regular Bible study, and appreciate your faithfulness to all of our services. Um, April 24th is going to be our annual church business meeting at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. So we encourage you to be here to see um, what God is doing and to hear the report of our church. Um, youth convention, all the young people say youth convention. Excited for Youth Convention in Visalia starts this Wednesday through Friday. And we want to pray that God's touch and protection would be with our young people this coming week, that they would experience and receive something from the Lord in Visalia this coming week. 
um, Band of Brothers prayer and breakfast this Saturday at 9 a.m. at the church. All the brothers that's come together, fellowship in the word and in fellowship. Band of Brothers at 9 a.m. Kingdom Builders can be dismissed after worship service. Praise the Lord. Matthew 28, 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Mission Sunday is our part in fulfilling the great commission of going into all the world to spread the gospel. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? So today, Lighthouse, this is the day where we renew our commitment on our part to, to spread this gospel all around the world. Not all of us can get on a plane. Not all of us can get on a boat or to go to a foreign land, but we can do our part to fulfill the Great Commission by our giving. And most of you, you have received one of these, hold it up. Most of you have received one of these faith promises. Sister Alex, if you have not received one, if you could raise your hand, if you're a Lighthouse member, go ahead and keep those hands raised. A faith promise pledge card. And <clears throat> just to go over a few things, Lighthouse supports the following missions ministries, global missions, North American missions, Emergency and natural disaster support, Tupelo Children's Mansion, Lifeline Connect, um, which is a men's recovery home, and and many others. But last year, just to let you know, and some of you already know this, last year you gave to Global Missions twenty three thousand and eight dollars and seven cents. Give yourselves a hand. We give God the glory. For all this, you placed 300 out of 3,157 churches of the United Pentecostal Church. You placed 326 out of over 3,000 churches. And 14th in the Western District, not including all the other ministries we support, uh, North American Missions, um, Ladies Ministry, Save Our Children, and um, Move the Mission. And we had a wonderful Move the Mission offering last year. And what did we give? Over seven? Over 7,000 to Move the Mission. And a few of our young people were real McCloys. So you already know the power and the blessing of giving to the work of God. The word says, prove me now, hear what said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven... And pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I think there's a lot of people that can attest to the fact that you cannot outgive God. And you say, Amen. You cannot outgive God. So, what I'm going to challenge you is from now and throughout this service, let the Lord speak to you. And why don't we stand? We're going to worship the Lord in our offering. But you don't have to put these now in the offering unless you, God has already spoken to you. But I encourage you to let the Lord speak to you throughout this service. And some of you have already had um, made it a lifestyle of, of, of monthly giving. If God speaks to you to increase that, keep it where it is. But what I want you to do is to let the Lord speak to you on what you would have to give. If you have not been given and would like to start, start anywhere. It's not, it's never been about the amount, folks, like I said before. And the Lord will take what you have and increase and multiply it. But what we want to do is obey the voice of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I encourage you to let the Lord speak to you throughout this service. And Brother Hines at the end of his message, when he opens up the altar um, for altar call, you can bring that up and put it in the plate. And then then if you just need a little bit more time to think about it, you can do that too. We'll be um, pushing this through the remainder of the services that we have. But why don't we all together 
we're going to uh, worship the Lord in our tithes and offerings. But we're going to ask the Lord to speak to us throughout this service on what he would have you to give. And let's obey the voice of the Lord. Can we do that? Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for your presence that we feel in this place. Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of giving to your kingdom, Lord God. We know, God, that you will pour out blessings, Lord, that we cannot contain. Lord. God, help us to hear your voice throughout this service, Lord God, and to obey it, Lord, and to walk in faith, Lord. We ask you to bless this offering as it goes to further your kingdom around the world. We give you all the glory and praise. Everyone say amen. Amen. And this time we're going to worship the Lord as we give.
the King right now. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We lift our voices to you right now, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's right. That's right. Let his name be known in this place. Lord, we give you glory, God. Hallelujah, Lord, let your name, Jesus, be lifted in this place. Do whatever feels appropriate for you. You can lift your hands, you can bow your head, you can lift your voice. Oh, but we come to worship you today, Jesus. We worship you.
every knee will bow, every tongue in worship, and every crown lay down. Let every demon tremble, his name exalted high. Death has been defeated by the resurrected At the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue in worship and every crown laid down. Let every demon tremble, his name exalted high. Death has been defeated by the resurrected Christ. Praise to the King of Kings, Jesus the King of Kings. Praise to the one who set me free. your king. Praise to your king. Praise to your king. voices together with us and see.
Oh, let's continue to magnify the name of Jesus this morning. I'm going to have them sing it one more time. And if you have not yet tapped into his presence, oh, we're just going to take a few more moments and let him know how much we love him. Can we do that this morning? Hallelujah. You may not feel the praise within your heart, but I tell you what, if you just reach out, lift up your hands, surrender to him and worship, he's going to meet you at the point of your need this morning. Hallelujah. Why don't we let the Holy Ghost have his way this morning? Oh, I exalt thee. Hallelujah. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh, I lift my hands to you, Lord. Oh, I give you adoration this morning. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt you, Lord. Hallelujah. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh, one more time. Oh, you're worthy of praise. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I worship you, Lord. Oh, I magnify your name. Oh, there's no other name. circumstance. We speak victory over depression. We speak victory over anxiety this morning. Oh, let the peace of God rest upon each and every one that is here this morning. Hallelujah. He's here to bring you comfort. He's here to bring you peace. He's here to bring you joy this morning. Hallelujah, unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, why don't we give the Lord a hand praise this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I promise you, if you just surrender your whole self to him, Today, you're going to leave here different. Your burdens are going to be lifted. Amen. You may not know the answer to your problem or situation right now, but I promise you, if you leave that at the altar this morning, God's going to take care of it. Rest assured, He's going to carry you through. Amen. How many are so thankful for the presence of the Lord that we feel in this place this morning? We are so honored to have Brother and Sister Hines here and their daughter, Savannah, and appreciate this couple so very much. And I observed them, I have observed them from a distance, how they have dedicated their lives to the kingdom of God. Brother Hines, is, well, both of them have been church planters 
in San Leandro, and that church is still going today. And, but they just, from a very young age, have dedicated their life to the ministry and kingdom of God. And Brother Hines has served uh, the Western District in a number of positions in the youth department and different areas. And now he serves on the Global Missions, Western District Global Missions team. And uh, I told him we've been wanting to have him for a while. So I'm so glad that God has allowed that to happen. Amen. And I know his daughter's going to minister in song, and she is a wonderful songwriter. And you can catch some of her things on Spotify or wherever, but she has written a few songs. But um, God has blessed them with wonderful children that's, that are all serving the Lord, that are all working in, working in the kingdom of God. And Brother Hines, we're so glad that you are here on this Mission Sunday. And we want you to come and take your liberty. Amen. Why don't we give the man of God a great big welcome. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. God bless you here today on this Sunday morning. We're so excited to be here. You can be seated. And um, love Sundays spirit is so uh, refreshing and it's, it's great to be around people who love the kingdom and who love you amen <laughs> and I know you feel that and have experienced that as a church and so we're just excited to be here on Mission Sunday and um, and we have been uh, so privileged to be a part of missions in uh, many different ways and my wife and I before we got married we're both able to be uh, different places like Africa and Spain and just, <laughs> amen. Uh, I was able to go and see her actually in Africa. She was over there for six months. Um, went with her family to see her while we were dating. It was supposed to be a surprise, but surprise got, <laughs> her sister messed that up, but uh, it was a great time. <laughs> amen. I was able to spend time in Af in uh, Spain and Portugal and, and uh, it's just, it's amazing to be a part of missions. And uh, so today we're going to have a good time, and I want my daughter to come and sing today, and she's going to uh, bless us in ministry. Man, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord today. Um, I'm so excited to be able to go on a mission trip, actually, with Apostolic Youth Corps to Arwanda next month. Um, we're going to be doing, uh, like, a lot of things, serve projects within the community, and then they'll have the kids be involved in the church services, and we'll get to have a lot of fun, do sightseeing and stuff, but most importantly, God is going to move, and he's going to impact not only our hearts, but the people of Arwanda, and I believe he's going to do amazing things, but um, I'm going to sing this song. It's called Available by Elevation Worship. I know sometimes when we say or when we pray, God, I surrender to you. God, I'm available to you. I know this is a mission service, and we're going to be talking about the impact of maybe missionaries overseas or whatever. But uh, being available to God can look like many different things. But for me right now, for me recently, being available to God, it means that I'm available to let God move in my heart. There we go through a lot of things in life. We're human. We go through a lot of stuff, and sometimes we can let bitterness and anger build up, and we become, we build walls in our hearts, and it's, we're not able to let God move in our heart. But today, I wonder if we could just be available for God to move in us in whatever way he wants to. So worship with me as I sing this song. you will give you a 
every piece. I hear you call, I am available. I say. prayer this morning. Ha! 
is a sacrifice Oh, use me how you want to, God To have your throne within my heart I hear you Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord together right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. The great spirit of worship that's here right now.
pray that we hear the word of the Lord today. fact that God would come and speak to us. Amen. It's such an incredible privilege. He would come and he would dwell with us and dwell in us. Words truly don't have the power to express how privileged we are for him to come and be with us. Amen. Now your pastor has asked us to pray as the service continues. And the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And I pray today God has already been speaking in this house. Continue to speak through the word. Amen. The word of the Lord would speak to us in a special way today. I believe he does have a word for us. Amen. We're reading in Acts chapter 1, verse number 4. Once again, thank you so much for having us. We're just so delighted to be here in our family. And uh, the kingdom of God and the body of Christ is just unmatched. In good times and in, and in bad. Amen. The brotherhood and people of God coming together. And that's what we're doing today on a Sunday morning. It's come together as the Ecclesia, the called out. Today we want him to continue to have his way. Acts chapter 1, verse number 4. The Bible says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be Witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I want to talk today on this thought, the kingdom factor, the kingdom factor. One more time, if you could lift your hands and ask God, speak in this house. Jesus, we covet your strength, your touch, your word, your presence in this place. Hallelujah. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you today. Hallelujah. For thou art worthy to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Hallelujah. We give you honor today. Hallelujah. We set you on the throne today of this place and of our hearts in Jesus' name. That you would be king in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you today. You may be seated. I'm sure some of you here are familiar with the term, I've been waiting for my ship to come in. My daughter's probably thinking, yeah, I've never heard that before. We have these conversations often as she is much younger than I am and hasn't heard all the sayings of the world. And uh, just the other day, I forget what it was. I, I said something, she's like, what does that mean? Like, well, let's, let's talk about it. It's a 16th century saying referring to waiting at the dock for a ship laden with rich cargo that might make one wealthy. And uh, it's just referring to the idea of waiting for a break. When is it going to be our turn? And I think some of us think that our ship sunk a long time ago, just like the Titanic. Have you ever felt that way, just waiting for your ship to come in, waiting for it to be your turn? I'm not talking about those who are sitting on the couch eating a whole bag of Doritos and expecting things to change. If it's a box of donuts, that's okay. I, I love donuts. I'm 
talking about people who love Jesus, who heart, whose hearts are turned towards him. Just like the disciples in the scripture text that we read, they said, is this the time you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? They have been over, uh, under Roman rule for, I think, over 600 years now. They've read the prophecies. They've heard the stories of yesteryear. They've read about the former glory of their nation. And they were asking and hoping. They have watched and they've been able to participate in the miracles that were performed by the hands of Jesus. They have received the revelation of who Jesus truly was. They have listened to him speak about leaving and coming back again. And they are just wondering if this is the time that their ship was going to come in. That the kingdom was going to come like they had imagined it. Because they could only imagine what they could imagine. Jesus setting up a kingdom, sitting on a throne, ruling and reigning on earth. And do you think that Jesus is ignoring their question, or was he answering it in our scripture text? He said, it's not for you to know the times of the seasons, but you're going to receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You're going to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. He most certainly was answering it in the scripture text. He most definitely was going to return and set up his kingdom. He was going to return and sit on a throne and rule and reign, but not like they imagined. It wasn't going to be a physical throne. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Well, that word means to imagine. Amen. It's something that we all, that, that at times we cannot imagine or think of. It's only in our finite mind what we think that God is going to do or how he is going to do it. Jesus told us, and the disciples came to him, and you read in Matthew chapter 6, and Jesus begins to tell his disciples and lay out how they were supposed to conduct themselves in private and in public uh, uh, related to their worship and their prayers and their giving. And, and they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And so he said, pray this way in Matthew 6 and 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then he tells Nicodemus in John chapter 3, that you've got to be born into the kingdom. In fact, he said you've got to be born of water and of spirit. Because if you are not, you can't even see the kingdom of God. I was filling out a form the other day, and I saw this term, and I kind of had to look it up because I was thinking, is that me? I wasn't sure because I hadn't seen this term in a while. And that term was naturalized citizen. So I looked it up, and I saw, okay, it's, it's someone that was not born in the United States, but they came the, the correct manner, the legal way. They were, they were naturalized and uh, went through the whole process, and they had been here for a little time, and that was a naturalized citizen. Represents a legitimate citizen of the United States. See, we are not naturally born into the kingdom of God. But there is a supernatural birth that happens to be born again of the water and of the spirit. And we know that Jesus is the way. He is the door. He said, you can't come in any other way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Many have wondered why there is only one way or how could it be that there is only one way to Christ. But when we come face to face with Jesus, who he is, and his grace and his mercy, we realize we've got to be thankful that there is a way. <laughs> Amen. That we can come to him. Amen. He said to come boldly before his throne of grace and of mercy. And so he said, you've got to pray, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We look at Esther in the story of Esther, where Mordecai had received the word that destruction was going to come forth upon all the people, all the Jews in the land. And he said in chapter 4 and verse 14, for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Mark chapter 1 tells us that Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. 
And then we find in Matthew chapter 11 where Jesus is talking about John. He said, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. This same scripture is quoted, or the same words are quoted in Luke 16 and 16, and we hear it this way, where he said, The law and the prophets were until John, and since that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. These two phrases or words, suffereth violence and presseth into it, are the same words. Same term, only place you find them in the Bible. It's, it's he's speaking about a zeal, an ardent zeal to share in the kingdom. In fact, I believe that we, he was referring to the sinners, the publicans, those who were, as it were, passing up the scribes and the Pharisees in their relationship with Jesus, in their hunger for him. The scribes and the Pharisees, they had the law down. They had done this since Sunday school. They felt like they knew what they were doing. They had the law memorized. They had the prophets memorized. But Jesus said, you are far from the kingdom. But he looked at the, the, the publicans and the sinners who were just hungry to be close to him, to know him, to be about what he was about. He said, these are the ones, amen, that he's speaking about that were pressing into the kingdom of God. Paul was debating those that were trying to dispel the gospel. He and others were preaching and he said in 1 Corinthians 4 and 20, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. In other words, he said, you can put a bunch of words together, but the proof is in the power. He said, we come and preach the power of the word, the resurrection power that we speak of. Amen. That is what is changing our life, and that is what is going to change your world that you are living in, is what he was telling them. We've got to have the kingdom of God. Not in just word, but in power. There's got to be something happen when we come together and talk about who Jesus is. Amen. What he has done for us. Amen. Anybody can preach out of the Bible. But we need the kingdom of God to come. Amen. Into our hearts and into our community. There's something about this kingdom that is different than any other kingdom of this world. Luke chapter 1 and verse 31. And this prophecy that was brought forth. And the angel is speaking, and he said, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great. He shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And of course they knew this was true when they looked at the prophecies of the Old Testament where we find in Daniel 2 and 44. And the dream is being described here and what was going to happen. But the overarching principle and the promise still holds true when he said, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. This kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Amen. He's not leaving this to chance, what we're doing here today. We're not going through the motions. We're not hoping it's going to work out. We're not part of a hopeless kingdom. Amen. We don't preach a hopeless gospel. We're not walking in a hopeless walk. But there is a confidence that we have in him. That's why he said, don't cast away your confidence. Amen. Because when you give your life to him, it will have great recompense a reward this is a kingdom we are part of that's never going to be destroyed this is a kingdom we are part of that is not left a chance but there is a plan there is a purpose and a king behind all of this amen that if you put your hands in his hands amen if you put your trust in him and you say lord let thy kingdom come in my life amen he's going to make it work out for your good So if Jesus told us to pray this way, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. If there is a call to kingdom just as there was 
to Esther, just as there was to the disciples. And we see the call to the kingdom, amen, even in what he quoted today in Matthew 20, 19, go you therefore, amen, is speaking to all of us today to baptize, amen, to teach all nations, amen, that he is the king and there is a kingdom you need to be a part of, amen. If that is what is happening, I don't want to miss it. Amen. Let me tell you today, when it comes to the kingdom of God, the ship has already come in. We're not waiting for our ship to come in. Amen. If you're part of the kingdom of God. Amen. Jesus said one day, he said the kingdom of God is in you. Amen. It's something I've already placed in you and it's going to be established on the earth. He told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. The kingdom of God is in you today, and it's being established on this earth. Amen. It's not a one and done thing. He came and he left, and he came back in his spirit. It is continually, every day, being established within us and, amen, without us, around us. The thief on the cross said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The kingdom factor, this, this phrase, I, I borrow this from, is what we call the X factor. The X factor, I'm not talking about the show. The X factor is defined as a circumstance, quality, or person that has a strong but unpredictable influence. Let me tell you, that is true about Jesus, except he is not unpredictable. He might be unpredictable in how he does it, but he's not unpredictable in that he is going to do it. You can count on him every single time. He gives us his promises in the word over and over. He said, my ear is not heavy that I cannot hear. My arm, amen, it's not shortened then I cannot save. He can and he will. And that's what is amazing about this king. Oh, there have been a lot of kings in the world, a lot of princes and powers and people that had a, that had a lot of power, but they were not good. And that's what sets Jesus apart. It's not only that has all power in heaven and earth, but that he is good. He is not just great and that he can do anything. He is good and that he will. It's not just that he can, it's that he will today. Amen. That's the God that I serve. He is not willing that anyone should perish. Amen. But that all would have eternal life. He is willing today to be on our side. And he is for us and not against us. He is willing us to be part of what he is doing. We must factor in, not just the kingdom, but we've got to factor in to our situation and our walk and trusting him and following him. We've got to factor in the king. If we want his kingdom to come, we're going to need the king to come. We're going to need the king to work in our life. And that's why he taught us in Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. All the things that we worry about, all the things that we're not sure about, he said they will be added unto you if you seek first the kingdom of God. This is the economy of the kingdom. And we know that God has never been and never will be in a recession. He's going to be okay. He's going to get through. He's going to squeak by somehow. He's got a little bit left over. He's gonna, we're going to be fine. He's got at least one back and one left over. This is the economy of the kingdom. You see, seeking him first doesn't mean we will never have times where we might be poor. That's such a relative term. Just like rich is such a relative term. It doesn't mean there won't be times where it will be lean. We'll have more months left over at the end of our money. It doesn't mean our car won't break down. It doesn't mean we'll never struggle to pay our bills. But what it means is we will always have the resources it takes to further the kingdom and do the will of God, God is asking us to do. Amen. We will always have the resources if we seek him first. All these other things is to do the purpose of God. It's to do the will of God. We will always have the resources because it's about the kingdom. It's not our kingdom. Amen. We're not building our own kingdom here today. Amen. Because whatever we build can be torn down. Amen. But if we build the kingdom of God, it will never be destroyed. The prophet said, amen. Whatever you give into the kingdom, whatever you do for the kingdom, whatever you do for the king, it will never 
be destroyed. It will never be a waste when you put it into his hands. And maybe it's something you do and you never see it getting. You, you give some, some money to a missionary and you never see it with your eyes. But let me tell you, amen, God sees it and he keeps good books every time. He's writing it down, amen, and he knows what you've given and what you've done for the glory of God. So we must today talk about the mission of the kingdom if we want it to come. Really, I think it can be boiled down to two things. First of all, the mission of the kingdom is to worship the king. Because he is like no other king. You see, Jesus doesn't have an ego problem here today. We think, you know, it's just, it's all about him. Yeah, it is. Because he created us. But Jesus doesn't have an ego problem. That's not something that exists because there, he, he never has ulterior motives in, in ma- manipulating us. And I mean, you could call it ulterior motive. He wants us to be saved. But I don't think you can say that's really ulterior. I think that's just the only motive he has. The mission statement of Jesus said, I came to seek and save those which are lost. Amen. That's why we're here today in the presence of God. And so he doesn't have an ego problem. What we cannot do is create him in our image and how we think and how we operate and our finite mind and our mistakes and how we deal with one another and, and the hurts that happen. Amen. But we, he said, you've got to be created in my image. Amen. He said, we have been created in his image. Amen. And sometimes it's a mother stuff that, that hangs on to us that doesn't look like him. said years ago, and I, I read this years ago, and went to Rome, uh, you know, in 2015, I really just went, and, and we were in Florence, and we didn't go inside to see the actual statue of David that Michelangelo carved. We didn't want to wait in line, so we saw the replica that was outside that you could just walk by and see. But we were only there for one day, so off the cruise boat. But it has been said when he went about to, to create this statue and this, this masterpiece, they asked him, how do you go about, where do you start to create this? He said, first of all, let me tell you, the statue of David, the image of David is already in that piece of granite or marble he just made. He said, the challenge is I've got to take away everything off of that that doesn't look like me. We have been created in the image of God here today. And what God is trying to do is take away everything out of our life, amen, and off of us that doesn't look like him. Let me tell you, he doesn't have an ego problem today, but when we come together and worship him and, and connect with him and, and not just understand with our natural understanding, but I dare you to worship him today from a willing heart, amen, to recognize him for who he is, to lift him up, to magnify him, to talk about how great he is, amen. You look at Paul and what Paul was dealing with when he wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1 and 15, he, he said, in his introduction and his and, and his talking to Timothy, he said, I want you, I want you to know who I am and, and my past a little bit here. He said, This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who I am, Chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. And then he gets through with talking about what God has done for him. Talking about his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. And it's like he had to take this little scriptural praise break, if you would. And he said, now unto the king eternal. Amen. Immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. He said, I've got to take a little break here. And I've got to lift up the name of Jesus for what he's done for me. Hallelujah. Amen. And the song says, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. Amen. Amen. Everyone here has a testimony. You've known and seen and lived in the goodness of God today. And that's why we can lift up our hands and we don't don't feel like it. Amen. If we just remind ourselves how good he's been to us. The second mission of the kingdom is to spread the word about the king. Because he never circumvents working through the kingdom. We have a mission to make a difference in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. And while that at large is a mouthful, and how can we make a difference? I kind of break that down how I see it. See, your Jerusalem is Loomis, the surrounding community, where you are. It's like where the disciples were, where they started. 
Judea can be the NAM work you do, sending people out, supporting North American missions, supporting North American missionaries, their families. Samaria is your multicultural reach, those that don't look like you, just like it was in their day. Samaria was kind of off over there. They don't look like us. They didn't even like them in the day. And Thank God he had mercy and helped them to know how to love those people. Multicultural ministry. The uttermost part of the earth is global missions. Paul said in Romans 14 and 17, there's this great debate here in this chapter revolving around meat offered to idols and, and holy days. And really what was happening here is the Jews were majoring on minors. And he said, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not all these minors you're majoring on, and all these little differences. He said, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is righteousness, it's peace, and it's joy, and all of this is found in the Holy Ghost today. I'm telling you, our world needs righteousness. Our world needs peace. Our, need, our world needs joy more than ever before. Amen. When he said on earth as it is in heaven, amen, we need peace on earth. Amen. It might not be at large. Amen. There are countries at war today. Amen. But it can be in our hearts. It can be, amen, in the kingdom of our hearts. It can happen, amen, in our communities. It can happen in our families. Amen. It can happen with one another. There can be peace and joy in our life. His kingdom must come in my life so that it can come in my family, so that it can come in my church, so that it can come in my community. And today we can agree together that we can become an avenue through which his resources come. It has been said, some give by going, some go by giving. But I believe in all reality we are called to do both on some level even if it's just across the street. I had the incredible privilege, as I mentioned to you before, to step foot in foreign soil and see what God is doing around the world, and I hope that I have more opportunities for that. But God has also worked in our lives here, planting a church and being able to build churches within even the church that we planted. We were able to build a church in a Bible school in Cameroon in honor of my father-in-law who passed away almost 10 years ago now. And it was a God thing, though. It was a vision that God gave to us, but he did it. And we were able to be a part of that. And that's the thing that, 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 that gets me a lot, is I don't want to miss out on what God is doing. I know that sometimes God does these things in spite of us. He's factored in our stupidity. Thank God. You talk about kingdom factor. He's factored in the foolishness of our hearts. He already factored that in when he called us. But every once in a while, I want, not for my glory, but I want God to do something in this world because of me. I want to know him. You look at Paul and his ministry. I mean, he was, he was a fishing boat in his day. Had this Macedonian ministry out. He had a vision of man from Macedonia praying for them to come. And they went, prayed about it. And this was the first open door to Europe, the first recorded time in history the gospel was preached in Europe. This opened many other doors, and it spread like wildfire from there. It was just a man from Macedonia. He doesn't even have a name. And there have been so many stories in the Bible. There are no names. It's just a man that prayed. It's a great catalyst for change. He prayed for revival. Let me tell you, I know Loomis has been here for 75 years. Or the church has been here in Loomis for 75 years now. It was here, it's here because someone prayed. Over 75 years ago, they prayed for God to send someone. Today, people are praying in communities where there are no churches and there are no places in countries where there is no leadership of the gospel. People are praying right now. So what we're doing is we're involving ourselves in the work of the kingdom. Here, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost part of the earth. 
You can read in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 where Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. And he dedicates two whole chapters to the example of the church in Macedonia. And he wants the church in Corinth to follow suit. He's using this church in Macedonia's example of what it looks like to give. 2 Corinthians 8 and 3, he said, For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves. What this means is they, uh, another version says like this, For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it of their own free will. <clears throat> Verse 4, Praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. In other words, they were begging us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift for the believers in Jerusalem. They didn't want to miss out on this opportunity because the purpose was to further the work in Jerusalem, which was the original place of the gospel. And they understood if it had not been for Jerusalem and the church there, they would not have the gospel. And he gets to the end of chapter 9, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, and he states these words that we're very familiar with. At all, oftentimes, he said, for every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give and not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he that dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. The word cheerful comes from the Greek word helados. If I heard it right, I do wear the Bible. It's the word hilarious. With such a joy. Brother Mullins has said this years ago, and I've, I've, I never forgot it. He said, you know, the fact is, is sometimes we'll give sacrificially, but we're not giving right. Because you've heard the term to give until it hurts. He said, but if you're giving until it hurts, you're not doing it right. He said, you got to give until it feels good. Because that's how God wants us to give. And it might be in such a way that, <laughs> this is kind of hilarious. I mean, we went to a missions conference one time, and um, we had some groceries in the cabinet. We weren't, like, super poor or anything, but, you know, we weren't building any mansions. But we gave everything in our checking account that night, because I felt like that's what we were supposed to do. And you think I'm going to tell a story how we went home and, and it was all back in our account. No, I just had to go back to work. You know, not every story works that way. But he said, you will have all the resources you need. There was another time that there wasn't any offering. And, and, and I'll say my wife prayed. I had some doubt. We had a $60,000, $63,000 doctor, doctor bill. God not only erased the doctor bill, but he put the $63,000 in our pocket. And we didn't even give him any offering that time. You can't pin down God and how he's going to work, but he's very predictable in that his kingdom, amen, is going to be established. And if you establish his kingdom in your heart, musicians, please come. If you establish his kingdom in your heart, if you will say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in me. I want to tell you, you're part of something so powerful and so amazing. This is a work of God been building to a crescendo for over 2,000 years. This is a time of miracle. And the best part is he is allowing us to be a part of it. I want to tell you as the United Pentecostal Church, we have absolutely not mar uh, cornered the market on salvation. But there are, there's a report I can bring to you from Global Missions, and I don't have numbers or stats for North America, but outside of North America. And you know that outside of North America, we have four times the constituents in the United Pentecostal Church that we have inside North America. We give to North American missions, and we give to global missions, and both of them furthers the kingdom of God. But last year, in the fiscal year of 2023, it goes from July to July, Report, and I always at sectional conference, I, I like to always give this report. It's always exciting. But in 2023, overseas, there were over 205,000 recorded water baptisms 
and over 261,000 spirit baptisms last year. That's what the kingdom of God looks like. See, God is pouring out his spirit. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That is happening right now. We're not all in the place where we can receive it. Not everybody's in that place. But what we're doing is we're part of a place, a kingdom. Not four walls, but a kingdom. Amen. A city of refuge, if you would, where people can come in and get in that place where your spirit is being poured out. It might be in your living room. A lot of places it could be besides right here. It might be on the patio of an apartment complex we were just at. Another city. It's a random thing, it seems like, but it's not random. It's just God building it. Friends say, God opened the door for us to give a Bible study for two, a Bible study back in Surveyor Road. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> That's not my problem. It's God's problem. God has done so many things in our lives, my friend. God has done so many things here. The testimonies that could be shared today. It starts and it ends with a simple prayer that Jesus said, this is how I want you to start your prayer. This is, I want you to give him worship and honor him for who he is. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then I want you to pray, thy kingdom come. If we could stand together all over this house. There will come a day when his kingdom will come in full. The fulfillment and the completion of his kingdom will be here on earth. And the Bible says we will rule and reign with him forever. But if we're going to be a part of that day when he comes to rule and reign, he's got to rule and reign right here today. Where we can say, Lord, I hear you call. I am available. Where we can say with an open heart. I know it's a hard thing to pray sometimes. It's easy to say, Lord, send me. Lord, use me. And then he, he starts using you and say, Lord, I feel used. Be real. These people are just using me. Isn't that what we prayed? But it's not our kingdom. It's his kingdom. It's work. But it's his power. It's his resources. Amen. It's what he gives. I wonder if you could lift up your hands right now. I know we've been praying all service. Praise God about what to do. How we're going to invest in the kingdom. What we're going to give to the kingdom. Today, this isn't just about our money either. Amen. This is a pledge to support the kingdom of God. But I believe this can be more than a pledge of what's going to come out of our bank account. Amen. This, this should be a pledge today. Amen. What's going to come out of our life. What's come, going to come out of the hours of our day. How am I going to, amen, allow the kingdom of God to come in my life and the world around us. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think or imagine. Amen. Don't use your imagination today. I want you to trust in the imagination of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's above what we can think or imagine. Amen. What God can do, what God will do, what we give to Him. And so today, amen, I give a very simple altar call. I invite you to come. The altars are open. I invite you to come and lay down your pledge cards. If you want to bring them and pray over them before you put them in the plate, whatever you feel to do, I invite you to come. Not only bring your pledge cards, but bring your heart and your soul to Him today. And say, Lord, here I am. I am available. Amen. I want the kingdom of God to come in my life. That's right. Amen. He is the king. He is the king. You can worship him today. You ought to worship him as the king. And lay your life before him in Jesus.